Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's learning space. Uh, my name is Nicole Gallucci from CosmoQuest. Uh, I am joined by our guest tonight, actually in-house in the room with me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Leanne Knipkamp and uh, Georgia Bracey. Hello. Hi everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so today we're going to be talking about Science Olympiad and uh, what that is, uh, if you're a teacher, how you get your students involved, um, some of the things you've, you've experienced as a coach for, the, for Olympiad. Um, and then we've also got, I actually prepared a demo of the we have week. a demo this week. I, d I know. Thank you, Nicole. Um, yay. Glad you can do it. Yay for the last minute. So uh, one of my favorite things to talk about, as any of you who've watched any of our Hangouts, um, <laughs> is radio astronomy and the fact that it is looking at the universe with invisible light. So it's a type of light that our eyes can't see, and it lets us see things that are um, different, different processes happening in the universe. Uh, and there's there's a couple of different demos that I like to do with respect to um, with respect to this invisible light thing that I call it. Um, you can you know if you if you have the technology and the money, you can get an infrared thermal imaging camera. That's really fun to play with. Um, you can you build a little Faraday cage and put it around your cell phone and see what it does. And maybe we'll do that on, on a future week. But uh, there are also these really cool um, beads, these plastic beads that respond to ultraviolet light grab the bag here so um, there's a couple different websites you can get them from you just you just type in UV beads and you'll get these UV sensitive beads um, from different uh, different science companies um, so here's a bag of like 3,000 assorted beads uh, so these beads you know they show up and and they look light in color um, under visible under normal visible light conditions now if you have access to outside, which I don't in my basement office. Um, the best thing to do, of course, is to put it in sunlight to see how it changes. Uh, but you can also use uh, different UV lamps um, to, to actually um, change the color of these beads to make them react. So what's actually going on is a little chemical reaction uh, in the plastic itself that makes the beads change color. So what I have with me that you can't see because it's off screen, I have a UV lamp. Um, it's kind of a, it's a really short wavelength UV lamp, probably not the most, probably not the cheapest or safest thing to be using. They use it for, um, um, I think, identifying fluorescent minerals. Um, but you can buy UV flashlights in like the 365 nanometer range that will make these beads react. And what happens, let me show you the result. I've been holding it under the lamp. And this is what happens to the bees when they're held under UV light. Can you see that, Georgia? Oh, yep. That looks lovely. And you notice half yeah. the beads don't seem to have reacted. Nope. Uh, so, uh, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? So, uh, <laughs> I like to do <laughs> what is wrong with them. Nothing's wrong with the bees, but what you don't see. Don't blame the bees. Hmm? I said, don't blame the beads. Don't okay. Blame the beads. What's I've going on? A layer of sunscreen. <laughs> to this half of the bag. Uh, and so you can actually, you can use these beads as, as in, you know, ultraviolet light sensors. You can, um, and then test the efficacy of different sunscreens. Um, so what I've actually done here is crossed off the, the uh, SPF, mm -hmm. crossed off the SPF of, of the sunscreen. And what I do is I'll randomly mix these up and, and cover the label uh, or put them in unlabeled bottles um, or, or have them coded so that I know what's in them. And you can demonstrate what a, a, a blinded experiment looks like with kids. And you give them these bottles with these codes on them and say, figure out, you know, put them in, put them in order of uh, strongest, or least strong to strongest. And you actually get, um, from the several times I've done this, you actually get pretty good results. You, you get your, you know, your, I'll, I'll throw in hand lotion that has no SPF whatsoever, uh, just to, you know, make things interesting. And, uh, and they'll actually move up the chain. And once you get to something like, in this case, 50, uh, it did a really good job of, of covering up those, those beads. Uh, so those beads, like I said, they're pretty, they're pretty cheap to buy. They're good UV, UV light sensors. Um, and let me turn my UV light off before I give us all skin cancer. Uh, you can, you can uh, it's a uh, great little activity to do with middle school or with elementary school kids before Mother's Day because you can use these beads and make jewelry out of them. And then they make jewelry for, <laughs> for, for, for Mother's Day. Uh, we did that totally serendipitously one year, and they loved it. Cool. And, and, and Science jewelry. 
Yeah, all the moms came to our observing night with these, you know, like plastic beads on earrings and bracelets. <laughs> and it was like, oh yeah, that's, that's our fault. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, you, you know, you can you can have them test uh, different things like the um, some of your car windows. Uh, see which which of the car windows, the windshield or the side windows, have UV coating on them. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, nice, nice. I've heard of teachers using those beads in a lot of ways like that to show how you can set up an experiment of many different types just with these beads. And But I've never been able to try it myself, so thanks for grabbing those and showing that today because I always wanted to see how that looked. Yeah. Um, we have a comment from, from Loris. Hello. Uh, he says you can go to your nearest beauty salon and borrow the UV lamp that they use for everything else. <laughs> that may work as well. So there's a specific wavelength range. Like I, I tried a, a black light first, uh, and I think the wavelength of this is too long. It is taking quite a long time to change the beads. So you have to try it out before you actually use it. Uh, sunlight is, is obviously just the best if you can go outside. Um, Especially if you're doing a demo with sunscreen, because your kids will end up covered in sunscreen, and that's not such a bad thing to do outside. <laughs> um, so yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's our um, that's our demo of the week: UV beads, okay. and I'm, I'm I'll be sticking in some more invisible light demos uh, in later weeks. Um, Georgia, do you want to? Give us the Globe at Night reminder. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, you guys, if you were watching, we had Connie Walker on. Um, she runs the Globe at Night Citizen Science Project, and that's a great project to um, use with your students or family. Um, and it takes place at certain times throughout the year, and it has started up again. Uh, March 3rd is the beginning of the next round of observing times for Globe at Night. So if you want to get out there and observe your night sky, see how dark or light it is at night, um, this is the time to do it. It's citizen science, so people are actually studying the effect of uh, all of the kinds of lights that we humans um, inflict on the environment. People are studying this and your observations, your data can help them with their studies. So it's a great citizen science project and it has begun again. So I don't, when is the ending time, Nicole? Sorry. Oh, it's uh, just, March 3rd through March, so it's already started March 12th. March 12th. And then another round will start again the 31st of March. Mm -hmm. um, but you can get out there right now and participate in Globe at Night. Yeah, go to globeatnight.org. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say lots of good resources on their website for teachers and parents, anyone who's interested. So go there and get out and see how dark your sky is. It's just counting stars. It's, it's it is. It's looking for Orion, yes. which is a pretty easy one to find. So it's good. Everybody can do it. Cool. cool. All right, so let's uh, get on to the main topic. I'm here with... Leanne Knipkamp. Hi, thank you for joining us. Hey, no problem. Um, and you are a, um, a coach for Science Olympiad teams. So can you tell us a little bit, what, what is Science Olympiad, to start off? Okay, Science Olympiad is nationwide, but only some states are involved in it. It's basically a series of events that students participate in. There are 23 events, and only 15 students can compete on a given team. Mm -hmm. And so those 15 students have to pair up in such a way that they can cover all 23 events. So they have to be a master in more than one thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. And those events are everything from paper and pencil tests to pre-builds to um, doing an experiment on the fly. It's all kinds of things. And they cover all scientific? All topics. sciences. Everything from biology to chemistry to physics to astronomy, everything. What, um, what age range students do you coach? Um, I coach high school, but it starts as early as middle school. Mm -hmm. So there's a middle school division, Division B, and then there's also high school, Division C. There's no Division A. No Division A. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that before. Yeah. Let's we'll see. Oh, well, okay. I wonder if they, they originally planned to do it younger in <laughs> elementary and it was too much. Maybe. Yeah, maybe too yeah, much. Too yeah. much. Yeah. Um, Excellent. How long have you been doing this, Leanne? I actually used to work here in the STEM center when it was Yeah. <laughs> I used to help run it mm -hmm. on the back end and then I worked at Lebanon High School first. I started that team there, and then I moved to Belleville West, started that team there, and now I'm at Belleville East, and we just started that team there. Oh, my gosh. So ten, the 10 years that I've been coaching, and then another two that I worked with Don. So from, almost from the beginning of the organization. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Very cool. 
Um, what got you? So was it just working here that got you started? Working here got working me started. Dawn? Right. Yeah. Yeah. How? Um, what is it like starting uh, a team in a school? What What is that experience like? What do you have to to go through? Um, it's kind of like pulling teeth <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Which you, you learned have, here, I'm sure. Right. Um, starting out, because I've started a couple different times, it always starts with just a few kids who really enjoy science. Mm -hmm. and you'll have a handful of kids who tell you, you know, I really was doing this this weekend. I made a potato gun or I made a, you know, ammonia bomb. And you're like, well, what? And those are the kids you kind of pull in and say, hey, I've got this thing we can do. Um, it's safe. And uh, it's right. schools, and you can compete with other kids and see if you're maybe smarter than your neighbors. And that tends to pull in the few kids who are tinkering in their garage, mm -hmm. maybe dangerously. And then they <laughs> tend to pull in their friends. And I've also learned, and this is totally a school thing, if you can get a cute girl or two, then your team expands exponentially. Really? Yeah, Ooh. all you need is like one or two cute girls. And then... <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> The ladies in science. Just yeah, to, so you're you know. focusing this creative energy of some of your students regarding science, focusing it in a more productive and hopefully safer way. Sure, that's how you start. <laughs> and then in general, my goal is just doing science outside the classroom because you tend to be restricted into what you can do in the classroom, A, for time, B, for curriculum, and C, you just don't have the resources to do some of these things mm -hmm. with the 150 kids you're going through. So if you have those kids who actually really enjoy science and want to be there, this is a nice opportunity for them to do something they couldn't get in the classroom. It's, just, it's fun for those kinds of kids. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you have a science club that, you know, and has this Olympiad ever grown out of a club that was already in existence, or has that not been your experience? It's not been my experience. Um, I know it, at both Lebanon and at Belleville West, that's all they have. But at East, they have a very strong biological sciences department, and so we've kind of merged as far as the biology events go. So we're able to talk to each other because those kids are already really good at things like forestry and rocks and minerals. They already study that stuff. So we've been able to pull from clubs, but it's difficult to make new clubs. Okay. And then so what's the time commitment like for like for a teacher who is interested in starting or, or maybe there's already one going, but they want to jump in and be a coach and, and run it at the school? My well, first suggestion would be to go to the coaches clinic, which is offered just outside of Chicago every year around um, Halloween time, usually the weekend before Halloween. Oh, okay. And they give you, you it's like a breakout session, a uh, workshop session, and you go into different events, and it's easiest to partner with another coach and try to cover as many events as you can, but it's typically the people who have been writing the event rules at nationals, and they can give you an overview of what they were anticipating finding or what they were expecting the kids to do. Because sometimes you give the kids the rules, you literally get like a manual that looks like this. And then you open it up and it's just words. There's no pictures or anything. It's just words. That <laughs> oh, that's what I saw. This yes, is, it looked familiar, yeah. The and so sometimes you get this and, and it's very <laughs> abstract. <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Words, 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 words. There's a little circuit okay. diagram. Two no. words. So sometimes the kids read these words and interpret it very differently than even the, the people writing the event anticipated. So it's nice to go to the coaches clinic and see what they mean by some of these mm -hmm. words. And okay. they usually have demonstrations there or samples there. And where, so where I is the coaches clinic? There. Is that something that's Great on... Lakes, which is right outside of Chicago? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it happens right around Halloween time. And um and that's it's the timing is weird because that happens right around Halloween and then you have enough time to sort of get your team together. And then for example, SIU's regionals, you get your um, list of events in January. So you're kind of hoping that you didn't overbook yeah. or overschedule mm -hmm. until January. And then in January, you can kind of figure out who's doing what and specialize a little more. Right, right. Okay. Um, do they all happen around the same time across different states? Do you know? No, they don't. Okay. So that's advantageous for us here in Illinois because North Carolina does their competition first. And many times students record their, their part of the competition or their progress on YouTube. So our kids will then look on YouTube to see what oh. their uh, elastic launch glider look like. And that's oh, interesting. Okay. From them. Okay. So we're yeah. an advantage, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Later in the year, we just had we ours two March, weeks ago. February sixteenth. Three weeks ago, I've lost track. I was here. <laughs> I just right. been three weeks. It's been three weeks since we had ours in Illinois. So yeah. Um, um, do you want to show some? So, some, so you yeah. go to the coaches camp, uh, yes. and you get some materials. Do you want to talk about sure. some of the materials? So you this got? is what I got from astronomy. Mm -hmm. This is like flashcards. Yeah. So here are the astronomy flashcards. <laughs> Now, is this for the middle school or the high school or for both? 
Yes, both. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. They just like okay. when you went to the astronomy one, they're very much like, okay, astronomy is hard. You just have to know everything. This is this is from this is I know this is from the high school one because I know Pamela wrote that version for for us here. <laughs> so the the variable star stuff. <clears throat> um, but then there's just a lot of pretty pictures and and uh, oftentimes students have to identify uh, different. So things. then they give you sample questions like this and they tell you what they're expecting to find. Yeah, this is cool. So this is. So this is a sample question. So it's got those flashcards. Uh, so y'all can play at home. Um, really? What's the question? Yes. The question is to put these following images in a sequence that result in a type 1a supernova. So this is stellar evolution. This is, um, is this high school or middle school? I feel like some it's of this both. was on the middle school. And yeah, it probably was. This, yeah, because th this was covered by the middle school. I did not know this in middle school. These kids are totally ahead of where I was. Um, but yes, you have to be able to identify kind of what's going on in these images. What kind of, is this a star? Is this a nebula? Is it mm -hmm. star forming? Is it supernova remnant? Um, and go through the, the steps of, uh, of formation and be able to put it in, in that, um, in the right order. So is that a recommendation, uh, recommended question for someone who's creating the test to use Leanne, or is that, or is the person that creates the test, you know, do they have really latitude to do almost whatever they can do whatever <laughs> they, they want? want. So they can do whatever they want. Know. Yeah, I've okay. been with teams to state before, and many times what you find at regionals is completely different than what you find at state. They both fit within the coach's manual, but they're very, very different. The expectations tend to be very different. It, okay. it seems to me, and I've never um, written a test, it seems to me that event supervisor is kind of like, okay, here's the rules, make a test. And then mm -hmm. they're expected to just generate a test. That's actually what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can verify that. So, I, yeah, I wrote yeah. The, the middle school test for the one in Illinois here three weeks ago. And, yeah, it was kind of like, here's the manual. Go to town. And I was like, ah. So, you know, I, 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 I the last time I created a test, it was qualifying exam questions for grad students. So I really had to school <laughs> myself back. Woo -woo. Wow. Um, but yeah, we, we do keep copy. I know we keep copies here of the previous year's test, so I was right. able to try and make it consistent. <laughs> and does it have to be a paper and pencil test? Could it have been, I mean, could you do something more creative or more hands-on if it fits somehow? Um, oh, yeah. Or is that, so really you could have it be a different format? Well, there's a lot of the, a lot of the, there are a lot of different, uh, maybe you can talk about, because I'm only familiar with astronomy, but some of the other sciences. Oh, yeah. Well, even for astronomy, you could have put these on tables, oops, and passed them and had them just identify them from table to table, or put them in order and had right. the kids explain what happened. So you could have flipped the could done, yeah. and, you know, given them the answer, make them come up with a question. But there's yeah. lots of different events. For example, um, I just did all these. I should know. They had a robotic arm, so they had to build an arm that could move uh, something from one place to another, so it had to be precise and gentle. It couldn't just slam stuff. <laughs> it had a boom lever, so um, like a cantilever, but it comes out to the side and it doesn't uh -huh. move. And they had to support the most weight, so efficiency. Um, they had to build an elastic launch glider, so a glider made out of most of them made out of uh, balsa wood that they used a rubber band to launch. Uh -huh. how, how long do they have to complete <clears throat> these tasks? So the event itself? Yeah. Um, usually the events run 55 minutes. That gives them five minutes to get from one event to another. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have to take that whole amount of time. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, the build events, many times they just take a couple minutes. But some of those build events also have a test-taking portion. Right. So, for example, there was one that was called um, thermo. So there's th thermodynamics. And they had to build a box that would insulate water the best that they could make it. And then they had to predict how much temperature loss would occur over some course of time. So that was part of it, building this box that was very efficient. Mm -hmm. And then they had to take a paper pencil test on the thermodynamics involved. So Q equals MC delta T, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it's a combination and they get double hit. So <laughs> or just be smart, they have to do both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the event and I ran an event this year. It was lots of fun. It's one I've done a couple years in a row now. I did the helicopter one, so I don't know if you had a group. Because yeah, I think that was that was middle school this year, that's right. But the previous years they had done high school as well, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, so they have to come with um, a helicopter, a little model that they build, and um, there's parameters for that. And they also have to come with a little log sheet um, to show that they have tested and modified um, the parameters of their helicopter, um, trying to get 
um, the longest flight or the highest flight, and they have choices of what kind of parameters they can test. Um, so it's kind of a, it's a nice engineering activity as well. So in that case, a lot of the preparation and um, activity happened before they arrived to the competition itself. And then, you know, at the competition, um, what's involved is they just have to do, you know, they have a test flight. And we time their flight for the helicopter, and um, they get two tries, and it's the, the longest time in the air, and that's it. But they have to come showing that they've done all this work beforehand to try to get, you know, um, the best helicopter they can get. So that's kind of a neat event, and that's a lot of fun. And some of them are really amazing. They've gotten better every year with the helicopters, so that's a lot of fun. And I also know there's a lot of videos on the web you mentioned um, other teams putting their videos on YouTube, but I think um, I think there's just some nice resources, and it could be from other teams too. But for you know teams who are building helicopters in this case or something else, just to get some ideas or some how tos on you know what to do for their particular competition, their particular event. So I don't know if that's sort of across the board. If there's more of that on YouTube now, but. Um, there are a lot of really cool helicopter videos out there. I know that. Uh, I just wanted to, to interject, as I should have said in the beginning of the show. Um, if you want to comment or ask questions, uh, we have a couple of different ways that you can do that. Uh, some of you are using the event page for comments. We're watching that. Uh, if you comment on the YouTube page, we'll see that as well. If you comment, um, if you're not on YouTube or Google+, uh, you can use Twitter and the hashtag learning space, and we'll see that too. So be, feel free to ask questions. I posted a link in the, um, on the event page for the Science Olympiad, the, the, I guess it's the national website. It's soinc.org, so that's where you can go to get more information um, about Science Olympiad. So uh, yeah, keep, keep questions and comments coming. Um, <laughs> So, Leanne, in your experience, what what kind of um, what kind of benefits do you think the students are getting out of it? What's their reaction to participating in in Science Olympiad? I think there's lots of things, and I hope I can remember half of them. <clears throat> One is just being able to think outside of the classroom. Many mm -hmm. times, especially right now, we're so motivated on testing and right. testing and testing. These guys are able to think and do anything they want. There aren't any parameters. They they can just discover, and there's so much value in just in that alone, for one. For two, um, I think many times students who hadn't really considered science as a career now see that there's something you can do with it. Like they kind of knew they were good at science, but they thought it was all like numbers and words, and now yeah. all of a sudden they're doing stuff. I think mm -hmm. that's very beneficial. I also think it's beneficial to see what other schools are doing. So you come and you compete yeah. with other people who also have these sciencey kinds of kids who are also cheerleaders or football players or, you know, all different dynamics of students coming together from different communities and they can see that it's kind of cool to be smart. You know, I think that's yes. incredibly beneficial for <laughs> high school kids. And, and then there's just the experience of being here on a college campus. Mm -hmm. You know, our regional right. is here at SIUE. And that's kind of cool because they have run of the campus and they get to eat in the Morris University Center and yeah, I know. bowling alley. They get really excited. Exciting. <laughs> Chick fil A. Oh, you know, they yeah. get excited about that stuff. But then if they make it to state, they get to see another university. They hang out then at U of I. And mm -hmm. that's how much, I mean, it's a, we have more land, but it's a larger campus. It's, <laughs> it's a, a yeah. little bigger school. Yeah. A bigger school. And that's, a, you know, a Big Ten and they do real research yeah. and you can see. That wasn't very nice. I didn't mean that. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can see their yeah. research being advertised. They've yeah. got monitors where they're updating all the time, and it's just very cool to see science happening at that mm -hmm. level. Yep. It's big. No! <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Do you talk to them, Leanne, too, about um, teamwork? and Because I know there's like a spirit award, right? We won it. Yeah. Did you? Well, Congratulations. Did you win it? Yay. Hey. So how do you... How do you does that sort of kind of foster that as it goes? You talk about that specifically with the kids. They and that's another thing. Let it happen. Yeah, they see they see the other teams from year to year, and they're like, "We're doing that next year, and we're doing that next year." And so this year, they um, they actually made big poster boards, and we left them at school, so they didn't get to use those. <laughs> they got chalk, and they wrote all over the sidewalks outside, and um, they made thank you cards. I think that was the big one. They yeah, made thank you cards I got for one from one of the middle schools. Yeah. Yeah, I got one of the middle schools, I have it up in my office. Yay! <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Because all the event supervisors are volunteers. Nobody gets paid to do this, except mm -hmm. for maybe Dawn, oh. but that's just her job. And that's yeah. just part of the 
yeah, it comes with the territory. Yeah, yeah. No, we were all here on a Saturday. They did give us pizza. And that's They cool. did feed us pizza and donuts, so... Yeah, and, and donuts, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm still in grad student mode. I'll do anything for free. <laughs> yeah, especially peanuts and donuts, or pizza and donuts. Yeah, it's pretty Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Leanne, how do you prepare your students um, for something like astronomy, where it's, you know, you have to know it all, like you said. <laughs> um, do you... Do you give your students guidance, you know? Now that's a hard And question. does that kind of freak them out a little bit that they know it could be, you know, almost anything, a question on? Yes, the hard part know. getting started. That's the hard part because yeah. I, and different coaches I think see this differently. I kind of feel like this is a place for the kids to learn and explore what they're interested in. So I very much just give them the reins and say, go for it. I'm here if you have questions or need to find something, but I'm not mm -hmm. teaching you this part. Yeah. This is for you to explore. And I think different people will handle that differently. That's just how kind of I do it. And um, so many times I'm like, okay, this is what I learned at the coaches clinic. And I tell them the bulletins that I picked up. Here are the instructions. Here are the, all the resources I have. Get started. And mm -hmm. they just kind of run with it. And they go. Some of them need a little more guidance, like, um, like write it, do it. That's an event that you do on the scene. Like you can't really, mm -hmm. you don't prepare. You just come and wing it. And in that case, you have one person who sees some strange object and they describe it as best as they can. And then their partner is going to then look at the description later and try to rebuild that object. Yeah. And so that's one that I can help with because I can just put stuff together and say, here. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them I can't help a whole lot. There are, I think, I think there's there's a website, Sci Ollie. It's the um, national website. You can go there to get practice tests for things like astronomy and anatomy and physiology. Okay. And rocks and minerals. So there's resources there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for good. the most part, I just make them do it themselves. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. Yep, very good for him. <laughs> Wait, Cy Ollie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh, it's down. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. The website's down or else I would share it. Oh, um, no. Okay, well, later. Later. Yeah. Um, we have a couple questions. Chris Rand uh, is asking, do we have any part, is the Science Olympiad partner with U.S. first? which I think is a robot type competition. I don't think there's any official partnerships. Um, you can correct me if you've heard of anything. I don't know of any, but okay. I know. But yeah, there's definitely robotics involved. Yeah, there's in always a robotic Olympia. something. There's either a robotic yeah. arm. They rotate in groups of three. Every three years they rotate the events out. I think it's so that the same kids can't use the same device all four years. Right. So right now mm -hmm. it's robotic arm. And the last one was more like a bot ball kind of thing where you yeah. had to make a device that was a vehicle and it had to move balls around different um, mm -hmm obstacles and put them in a particular place so that concept changes from year to year okay but i don't know that we necessarily have partnerships i'm sure any coach would be, welcome someone right to mm -hmm. help with that stuff <laughs> the programming especially is very difficult i think i don't understand it at all oh, okay so okay i'm sure if there's somebody who wants computer to help, programming that goes yeah. into building up the robot yeah. how much so so some of these activities they build beforehand like you were saying with the helicopter how long do they have to do that is that like a few weeks, a few months, a few days? And that depends on the coach. I usually okay. try to get them started as soon as I come back from the coach's clinic. Okay. So I want to see what the new rules are and whether or not they've changed them mm -hmm. from year to year. Mm -hmm. And then I give them the rules to start. So it's not just the one-day event. It's all the... It's months of prep. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no money. <Yeah>. With no <laughs> money. <laughs> Do you try to get your parents involved, Leanne? Do you have... How, how involved do they get if you, um, if you do? Usually if you have a parent being involved, it's one of those things where like, okay, little Johnny can't come to school and work on Saturdays or whatever, so how about all those friends come to our house and work in our garage? That's usually the extent of parental involvement. That's been okay. my experience. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I could see some parents, <laughs> I could see some, but I, and I'm thinking of myself in the future, um, wanting to like, Yes, and you have to be Play, very careful. And you have to separate them a little. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not an issue for some coaches because they're very hands-on, whereas right. I'm very hands-off. And mm -hmm. Right. Me, I don't really like all that involvement. I want the kids to figure it out. Right. Because for me, it's, it and again, everyone's a little different. I just feel like it's all about the experience more so than anything uh -huh. else. So have fun, learn something, figure one thing out, and that, that makes me happy. Yeah. So. It's really great. We have a question from Dave Appleton. Uh, what is the best way to get my 13-year-old niece interested in science? She hates it. <laughs> Can you think of any ideas? Um, all science, I guess, would be... I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends. That's really big. It depends on... There, there, there's somewhere that something in her life intersects with science. There's got to be science. something that 
matters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's 13, so she's probably very apathetic in general. They all are. <laughs> so you got to find something that or matters. Or maybe 13. I was going to yeah. say, that's a pretty tough age. Yeah. Maybe um, sometimes with 13-year-olds, it's their bodies. So that would make me think about biology. So that yeah. would make me think about anatomy and physiology. And then I would think maybe a museum where they've got, I forget what it's called, how they have the bodies dissected. And like, <gasps> the bodies exhibit. The bodies yes, exhibit. Yeah. Something like that might spark an interest. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of assumptions I just made about a kid I don't know. Right. It depends. <laughs> I mean, if she likes buildings, maybe, you know, some kind of, oh, my gosh. I don't know where I just went with that. I don't know. I was thinking archi like architecture, <laughs> which is, you know, the same thing, but yeah. Um, yeah. And, and personally, of course, I think astronomy is a gateway science, you know, black holes and the night sky seem to <laughs> get people I interested. Know. I know. Um, but but yeah, I think cool. if you find a way that it intersects with, with current interests, make it personal. If there's anything at all that she's into makeup, if it's makeup, then maybe oh, there's lots of chemistry material there. science, right? Oh. You can make your own chapstick. You can make your own lotion. So that's almost crafty. Sometimes that's appealing to the girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The girls. The girls. <laughs> Do you see, Leanne, that um, after experience with Science Olympiad, some of your kids show more interest in science, like in the classroom, the more like, you oh, know, yeah, more multi the class. Yeah. They'll yeah. Like, oh, and we did this and we did that and this was so cool. And then before you know it, other kids are like, did, can we join? Is it too late? And you're like, no, come on over. And then oh, your good. teams kind of build. And it, it definitely grows. It's a word of mouth thing. You start with your couple kids that are super into it, and then it just sort of grows. Your maker kids. Your maker kids, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Oh, cool. I'm just looking back, making sure I didn't miss any comments um, on this stuff. So, um, so Sci Ollie, so this is one website you can go to. Um, do you know and that's you the national site, right? right. Yeah. Or okay. What was the one I just had up? <laughs> I just posted. Um, Soinc.org, um, and that's also where I went when creating tests. Um, okay. if, you know, if you're if you're a faculty at a university and they're hosting this event, get involved because it is, it is it is really cool to put together a test. Um, like I said, our, ours was more paper and pencil, which is a, a little more standard. Mm -hmm. um, but walking through the hallway that day, just seeing all the different apparatus. <laughs> oh yeah. That, last, that, last two years ago, I think they had to make musical instruments, mm -hmm. and that was very cool because you'd see everything mm -hmm. from percussion instruments to like trombones made out of PVC pipe. I mean, you just that was real. That was a cool one. That'll come back again, I'm sure. Yeah. And I think was that where they had to actually take their instrument then and play some play music song. that they hadn't seen before, right? So. Yeah, they had to play one song that they chose, a short one, and then they had to play some random music. So you had to have someone who was musically inclined. You couldn't. Yeah, just that's really amazing. Oh, that's excellent. And there's that lots one. of science and music, see, but not everyone would connect that. And that one has a paper yeah, pencil that's... test also, <laughs> so they have to know things like nodes, anti nodes, all that kind of stuff. Wow. Wow. Very yeah, Chris, cool. Chris Rand uh, just just commented about this on, on YouTube. Thirteen year olds love music. <laughs> Sound weights make up notes and can lead to. I wouldn't go to string theory with that one, but definitely the science <laughs> is all over that. Um, and yeah, having absolutely zero musical background myself, I remember going through that in physics, and they're like, "Oh, it's just like octaves. It's just like that." I'm like, "I <laughs> that means nothing to me." So getting your musically interested students, sure, yeah, involved is is, is mm -hmm. really. A good idea. So yeah, but that that's also to the to the question with a thirteen year old niece. Get into music. <laughs> Get the music. Yeah. Just build instruments out of anything. See what you can make noise with. Even a straw. You know, fill a straw with water and blow over the top. Yeah. How the water decreases. I kind of just silly tricks. I do that with beer bottles, but that's not appropriate for thirteen year olds. <laughs> you get glass soda bottles. <laughs> you do Go with that. Go with that. Yep. Oh, oh, I should yeah. really be allowed to teach children. <laughs> um. Trying to think of what what other any other interesting experiences you could share um, stuff that your students build that really surprised you. Um, one year, Goldberg devices was there, and um, they didn't call it Goldberg device; they called it something else. Um, Mission Possible. That's yeah. what they called it, and they had to build a Goldberg device. And we had one group of students. This is when I was at West, who did extraordinarily well, and they got to go to state. And the um, judge, the supervisor there at state, commented on how amazing it was and how well it was run. Mm. And that student then put it, you know, he was going to go to U of I anyway. He was a senior. He had kind of written on his application, you know, I did this science Olympiad thing. I talked to the coach. And the supervisor remembered him when they were going through his um, oh, wow. application. 
So it was kind of cool that they had that overlap. I think that I like to think that helped him get yeah, into okay. UVI. He actually went on a huge scholarship. And I don't know that he paid anything his freshman year. Wow. He's now a junior. So, and I've lost track because that was West and now I'm at East. But wow. he did really well. We also had a student who did Olympiad all four years and she's gone on to MIT. Cool. Which I think is very cool because we're Facebook friends and she's always showing me the cool stuff they're doing on campus. Oh my gosh. That's very neat. <laughs> Yeah, MIT students, you guys, you guys scare me, but you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've visited there. <laughs> Good. Uh, cool. Very cool. Well, how about any? Um, I don't want to say catastrophes, but any, any things gone wrong or any? Anytime you build something, because right, I'm anything. thinking all these, you know, yeah, yeah. big complicated devices. And well, we take a bus here from our campus, which is about 45 minutes away, mm -hmm. and buses aren't necessarily smooth, and so <laughs> something is going yeah. to break, and you just hope that you brought something to fix whatever break, and you, you don't know what to anticipate, so you're bringing hot glue mm -hmm. guns, you're bringing duct tape, you're bringing screwdrivers yeah. and screws, and you just don't know what you're going to need. You're so all toolbox. All apart. We've had things work perfectly at school, and you get here, and nothing. You got nothing. Yeah. A bridge one time, just, it shattered. I don't know what happens between there and here, but it just nothing. So then you can compete, which is heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but that's one event out of however many you have that day. So you can right. still. Um, so we t we talked about ways that that teachers who are interested can get involved. Um, are there ways that if you're a parent of a student or a student watching, you and your school doesn't do that, is there a way to? Sure. So there's two different things. If a parent is involved, you can have parents as coaches. Parents oh, okay. are allowed to coach. And that can happen. Um, you mm -hmm. just got to go to the website. It costs $150. Might be up a little bit now. It's about $150 per team. So we have a varsity and a JV team, so we usually drop about 300 on it. But you have to have cash to register, and that buys you entrance into your regional as well as the coach's manual. And then once the parents get the coach's manual, then you can do whatever you want to prepare. Um, again, the coaches clinic is in October. I would suggest that to anyone starting. Students who want to get involved, I would hit the principal and I would get your parents involved. And then I would actually start talking to the school board because the school boards are the people who have all the power. Yeah. So if you get the school board interested mm -hmm. and on board, if you just go to a meeting and say, hey, I heard about this group and blah, blah, blah. I would like to be a part of it. They will push to get a teacher to sponsor. That's kind of how you make things happen <laughs> Very in cool. school. Very cool. Who to talk to? Good. Now, can homeschoolers also do this, Leanne? Do you know? Yeah. The hard thing about homeschooling is you want to have a large enough group that you have at least 15 kids. I think that would be okay. the hardest part about homeschoolers, um, okay. especially middle school. This would be very cool. But mm -hmm. you want to be a part of a homeschooling group. And many times they, they're homeschoolers already are. Right, right. But the hard part would be to find your 15. Okay. You can compete with less than 15. It just becomes very difficult because you'll end up having kids doing four and five events. And it's very mm -hmm. difficult an expert an expert in four or five things yeah and then they're going all day they're just one event after another after another and they're exhausted yeah. <laughs> I had some some kids running late to my astronomy test uh, one particular it, 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 just you know whatever had happened oh no I'm frozen don't drop uh -oh. Georgia you can hear me oh okay. fine to me oh I was gonna say <laughs> okay <laughs> I thought we were gonna okay, leave but... again Ooh. Um, yeah, we had students, uh, I don't know what happened, some schedule, of they just ran in there, out of breath, out of breath. I was like, okay, stop, <laughs> take a breath, I'm not giving you this test till you take a breath, I will give you extra time. Yeah, so that, when we had some events over in a different building, the yeah. biotech building, so they had to catch a train or trolley, whatever. Yeah, they had to catch to go somewhere, over. Mm -hmm. and that runs every 15 minutes, so oh. that's something you have to be conscious of, too, when you're scheduling the kids in different events, yeah. and you hope that you didn't. Put them on polar ends of the campus. Right, right. Sometimes you don't even know that until you get here, right. probably. Yeah. <laughs> so you wing it. But it really, it's mm -hmm. it's sounding more and more. So I, I only got to see one little part of it. It's sounding more and more like Olympiad is the right term for this. It's the absolute. Right <laughs> term. You're do, you, you're 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 mm -hmm. getting really good at some subset of events. You have a team that's doing it, and you're just pushing yourself mm -hmm. that day, pushing yourself to the limit. But there's training that goes goes up to it as well. It's, it's a perfect word for it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, oh, so we have a question from Aviva. Hi, Aviva. She is uh, puts together a lot of our 365 Days of Astronomy content. Um, so Aviva asks if um, uh, are there materials for beginners um, 
for science Olympiads and more hands-on. So she is, is, is in Indonesia, and they have uh, science Olympiads with more advanced astrophysics. So she's wondering what kind of level... So the level of the science Olympiads here is more middle school, high school. Um, so I wouldn't call it advanced astrophysics. Um, and I would say go to the website for the material. Yeah, they've got tests. I mean, for astronomy, it's just mm -hmm. tests that right. you would use. So they have a sample tests on the website that you can download from previous years as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have them from like North Carolina's regional, um, Illinois will have a regional up there. I think Pennsylvania has regionals up there. And then you'll get the national test too. And it usually goes back four or five years. So you have a pool of tests. Okay, so there's a pool of tests there on the website. That's the one I've... I, I, Aviva, I'm sure, I promise I will post it on the YouTube link in <laughs> the YouTube description as soon as we get we get done. Mm -hmm. um, so so that so that's the the level of science Olympiad um, here in the U.S. Uh, if you were looking for that kind of material to bring in Indonesia, like um, I don't know what level that that, that you have there. Um, and uh, I just wanted to uh, mention a comment from Tree Lobsters. Hi, we heart you. Uh, there's also a difference between hating science and hating science class, and it sounds like. Agreed. Yeah. Do you find students that um, don't like the class as much yeah. that really get into this? Yeah. This My team this year was heavy in juniors, and I had four juniors who actually are not in a science class at all this year. Oh, they, this um, is their science for the yeah, year. So, wow. Yeah. So they don't love science. They, mm, they don't love science class, but they definitely like to do the thinking and the outside of the box and the activities. So these four particular students, I've got two of them who took industrial arts classes this year. They fulfilled their graduation requirements. Okay. And then another two who have taken a more musical route. They're doing art and music instead. So I did have four students who are not in any kind of science and still really enjoy Olympiad and did well. And did well. Awesome. Yeah, and the, and the goal isn't necessarily to turn everyone into a scientist, but to, to yeah. get that scientific process. Yeah, just have thinking. an outlet to do something that you wouldn't do on your own that's mm -hmm. science-oriented and kind of fun and to compete. Yeah, I think the great thing about it is you are competing, but as a team, I think the team aspect is really, really nice. So it's just so much, it's more fun, just so much more fun. Yeah, um, we have another question from Lourdes asking if there's a version of Science Olympia that could be done via internet or social media or internationally, and I don't know of anything... Um. Right. This particular this particular group is is within the U.S. Um, don't know of any international. I don't know again if you've heard of anything on the international level. We said there's there's a national. There's competition. a national competition. I haven't heard anything internationally. Um, mm -hmm. Like for example, Goldberg or Goldberg. I know is international. I don't think Olympiad is. I don't mm -hmm. think it would be that difficult to make the testing portion international. Right. I think that's something you could do like this. You mm -hmm. could probably even do things like rocks and minerals this way. Hold it up. Do a little scratch test. What is this? I think it's possible. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that anybody's thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to look into that because I don't, I have hmm. not heard of I've that. I've never heard of anything like that. It might make, I mean, yeah, judging things on the, uh, via internet. Obviously we have this wonderful Google Hangout platform, but judging things uh, <laughs> not in person is definitely difficult. But if you had judges, you know, locally that could, could transmit the results. That would be another way of doing it. Um, I'll have to look into that, and if I find anything, again, I'll add it to the show notes, um, either on the Google event page or on the YouTube description. So we'll try. Um, so at the end of the Olympiad, there's a big awards assembly and everything, and it's all big fun and excitement. And then do you do anything with your students when they all get back? You know, maybe it's the next day. Do you kind of debrief and, and process through things? Um, you know, what went wrong, what went great, what could have gone better, or, or just have a party or <laughs> kind of bring things to close? That's exactly what we do. We have one more meeting, and I, I usually provide the food for that one. There's a Taco Bell across the street from our school, so I go and get a bunch of tacos. Cool. And, um, I ask them what they think went well, and I ask Hi. them if they think they did their best. And then I ask them what we should, what changes we should implement for next year. And every oh. year it's consistent. It's we should have used our time wiser. We ah. shouldn't have messed around so much. You know, every year it's the same. Yeah, um, really? Okay. Good ones. I had one student say at the very beginning, once we get our um, events, we need to write down personal goals. My goal is to be at this point on this day, this point in this day. He said, and everybody needs to have their own personal goals. And I said, I, I like that. That's so that good. was a new suggestion for this year. I really wow. like that one. They're learning project management. Yes. Right. <laughs> of themselves. Yeah. And so I really liked that yeah. one. Because normally they're like, well, I need you to tell me, and I need you to tell me. And I say, okay, that's what you need. That's what I'll do. And that clearly wasn't working this year. 
So I thought it was nice that they came up with that solution to make their own kind of itinerary of events that they need to accomplish. So that was, that was what came out of this year, which I thought was really cool. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, I like that. Learning more than just science would be good. Really practical, cool. right? Practical solution to a problem. I think this year we had some lots of strong personalities, and so we had a hard time with our build events. People just agreeing on what to build and how to build. So this year, mm -hmm. I think part of our um, team's issue was just uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians, and mm -hmm. that can be difficult, especially when you're dealing with very smart people. And these kids tend to be intelligent; they're mm -hmm. science oriented. So um, many times they all think they have the best idea, and it's difficult to give them a chance to try everything and then pick what works the best for everyone. Yeah. It's hard this year. Yeah. Do you ever have to step in or feel, I know you say you're kind of hands off and you want to let them go do what they do, but when you get some personality issues like that, do you ever feel like you have to, you know, <laughs> come in and <laughs> help straighten things out a little bit. Yeah, I had um, students this year wanting to switch teams, and I said, like, oh. like this is not. I don't want to work with this partner. I want to work with this one. And I was <laughs> like, all right, that's fine. This is varsity. This is JV. If you want to not work with this person, then you can go to JV. And they're like, well, it's not that important to me. <laughs> um, given the choice to compete with a varsity team or JV team, they tend to get along. So that's <laughs> basically all I had to do this year. But it, they still were hard to it just a little bit. Well, it's yeah. not that much different from a sports team in that right. respect. Exactly. Yeah. Or even a workplace where you're trying yeah. to accomplish goals for a job mm -hmm. or money. You still yeah. have to get along and find a way to yield and to hold true to what you believe is appropriate but still hear other people. That's very difficult mm -hmm. for especially high school students. Oh, yeah. Who have been the smartest kid in their class their whole life and yeah. all of a sudden here's another smart kid. Yeah. Just as smart as they are. And yeah. It's an interesting um, situation to watch them work it out. Yep, that's good. But it is. It's preparing them for work. It's preparing them for college, where that happens all the time. And, yeah. So, well, wow. So, Olympiad, good for all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah, this year we had four four builders who were, they were at each other. And then all of a sudden at the end, they all pulled it out. The, all their stuff did really well. They ended up getting first and seconds on their build events. They did quite well. It was all done. They're like, oh, man, it's over. I can't believe it's over. And at that uh -huh. same time, we got invited to go do this Rube Goldberg thing. So I almost think that being a part of Science Olympiad and them hearing that we were building got us invited to this other build event. So then they got to build a whole new thing. So it kind of perpetuates other activities too, opens doors for them. Yeah. For other things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this sounds like, if, yeah, if you're watching and want to get involved, like I said, like you said before, talk to your principal, your parents, your school board, your teachers. Because this sounds like a really good experience that I'm kind of feeling like, oh, I wish I had this experience. Yeah, it's pretty school. fun. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Cool. It's exhausting, yeah. but it's fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can imagine. <laughs> it is worth it. Good. Cool. Um, All right. I will take any last questions uh, on the YouTube and the Google Plus and the Twitter, <laughs> if you guys have any. Um, but if you have any closing thoughts you'd like to leave us with about Science Olympiad, uh, anything else we didn't cover that you wanted to talk about? Yes, just do science. Do something. <laughs> it's always better than a video game. Just doing is better. Doing is good. I really, I really think that. I really feel that way. Yeah. Unless there's video game programming as an as an event, then it's okay. And still, I'm not sure about that one. We might <laughs> we might DQ that event. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, well, thank you, Leanne, so yeah. much for coming and, and talking about this and, and giving us resources for, for people who are interested no in getting involved in yeah. Science Olympiad. And I see you've got your... your um, actually, we were competing in group today, so I had to... Oh, you're actually competing today. Oh, that's right. How did that go today? I forgot Not that so was... good. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do awesome, but they did they did okay. So we competed in the Rube Goldberg competition today. It, you know, it gives the, it gave my builders a taste for it, and they just want to keep building. And now they're already thinking what they're going to do next year. Oh, that's cool. So Oh, that's really cool. cool. Yeah, I forgot you said that in your emails that you had a competition today. So. Yeah, <laughs> from one to the other. But now I'm, I'm done. I'm done until next season. Cool, cool. And you said the, the coaches' walk, workshop for Illinois is in October. Yeah, right around Halloween time. Okay, so um, yeah, other states, you're going to have to check your, yeah. your schedules as well to, to get involved for next year. I think. And is that a weekend, Leanne, or a one day, a two day for that coaches' mm -hmm. workshop? You can choose. It goes Friday to Saturday, and if you want, okay. you can just do the Saturday, or you can do the Friday and Saturday. And so we always, we take several coaches, we team up with other schools, and we try to cover every event, and we do Friday and Saturday. And I think it's totally worth it to do both days. And both do the, days. Any okay. event you can. Yeah. All right. 
Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Leanne. It was so good to talk to you. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching and commenting um, and asking questions. Uh, again, I will, I will post whatever links I can um, on the event page and on the YouTube video description. So you guys can check that out later. Um, for our Hangouts tomorrow, we have the Planetary Society at noon Pacific. Uh, that, that Emily Lakdawalla just sent around. I think it's about curiosity. I just saw the event come up a little while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Friday, we are going to attempt to broadcast the Weekly Space Hangout from South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. We'll be part of the big NASA tent extravaganza. Uh, I'm actually getting on a, on a plane at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, to get down there in time for that. Um, we should have the bandwidth. To, to broadcast, uh, but if there's a glitch, uh, somebody off-site will, will host the Hangout mm -hmm. for us. But it'll be me, Pamela Gay, Fraser Kane, and Scott Lewis in Austin. Uh, and we then get the big show. telescope? Yes, they, they, they have the, the tennis court size James Webb Space <laughs> Telescope. You can't miss it. It's near the Long Performing Arts Center, so if you're, part of, if you're coming to Austin for the Gaming Expo, come see us there outside the Long Performance Center. Um, there's a JWST mo model and the NASA tent. All free. All of our NASA stuff is going to be free. Um, and like I said, we'll broadcast the weekly space hangout from the tent or wherever we're set. Wherever. <laughs> we're going to figure that out tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, get your weekly space news with us. That's at noon Pacific um, on Friday. And then the virtual star party is usually on Sunday, but since we're broadcasting again from Austin, it'll depend on uh, the weather. So, so keep... Uh, keep um, Sorry, lost my train of thought looking at the comments. So keep keep following uh, Cosmo Quest. For right. Stay tuned. Yes, yeah, stay mm -hmm. tuned for that information. Sorry, I totally got distracted. Yeah, I know. Comment it's... about Camilla, and I, I don't have my Camilla here. Sorry, Camilla. Oh, no. um, <laughs> hopefully Camilla will be at South by Southwest as well. So we will invite Camilla to the Weekly Space Hangout. This is your invite, Camilla. Camilla uh -huh. Chicken. Please come to our weekly space hangout. We would love to have you. <laughs> so uh, that's that's what we got for this week. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Leanne. And we'll see you guys next week. Okay. Great. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.